everybody, welcome back to Cottonwood Hill Farms. So Lakota and I are on a little adventure and uh, he's doing some sightseeing as you can tell. But we are, uh, I forgot the GoPro so I'm on my phone so that's why it's a little, little bumpier but we are on our way to pick something up. We got something new that we're gonna pick up that uh, is gonna help us a lot this year. And uh, so we're, we're on our way and uh, you guys will see what it is here in just a little bit. probably can't tell what that is behind us what we're pulling a couple things but anyway we uh we're on our way home we're taking uh, two lane highways should be there in probably an hour or so and uh beautiful day though it's uh what it's like 80 i think 85 today is what it's supposed to be uh not much wind not a cloud in the sky it's just a beautiful day good day to good day to do this now is just a good time. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the notification button, and uh, be sure to check out all of our other videos too if you haven't already. But uh, we'll check back in here in a little bit. Those are the ugliest things I've ever seen. What a scam. Close, aren't we? Yeah, we're close. We're just coming into town right now. There we are! All right, guys, so it's uh, it's actually the next day. We uh, got home last night. We were running a little bit late, and I forgot Lakota had a uh, spaghetti feed for his 4-H club. So anyway, we got uh, we got the truck unhooked, got everything unloaded. And uh, what we're looking at here is we got a uh, chopper. This is a New Holland 890 chopper. We were able to pick this up pretty cheap, actually. These choppers aren't really worth much anymore considering, you know, everybody that does chop has, most of the time has self-propelled choppers, at least the bigger guys. And uh, a lot of farmers just don't chop anymore. And so uh, we were able to get this one pretty cheap, uh, 1800 bucks with both heads. Granted, I think that's, that's the hay head. That's the hay head right over there. Uh, granted, I think uh, that hay head isn't worth a whole lot uh, considering the condition. I think it's going to work fine for us for a few years, but uh, like I said, that hay head wasn't in the greatest shape, um, but I think it will work fine. This is missing. It's got the electric over hydraulic controls, you know, for the spout and everything, but it is missing the uh, control box. So I am going to have to run, uh, fix some of the wires on it and then make up my own control box with switches and stuff to run. You got your flapper up top and then you got your spout back and forth. And then, uh, oh, there's something else. I think it's the reverser over here. I think there's, maybe it's only three things. I was thinking there was four. All in all though, I think this chopper is in pretty good shape. Uh, considering I think it's a 2000 is what the guy told me you can tell it sat outside for a little bit but I think it's been fairly taken care of fairly well and I don't think it's got a lot of use because when I look at like uh, some of the uh, the chains and then the, the auger inside the back the auger doesn't have a lot of wear the uh, the uh, I guess the blower here isn't all worn out so all in all it's not in horrible shape I do have to get some new tires I had to steal these tires and rims off the uh, round baler to pull it home. Uh, it came with a corn head. We're probably not really going to use the corn head unless somebody, one of my neighbors or somebody wants, wants uh, some corn chopped or something. I don't know, but uh, it does have a corn head. But like I said, the hay head, the hay head was the main thing for us over here. And uh, it's, it's a little rough, but there's not much to these. It literally all it does is just pick the material up and push it into the chopper. So uh, I think anything that's wrong with it, it's, it seems to be all here. It may have some broken tines or whatnot that I can fix. Not a big deal. Chains, same thing. There's not much to it, so I think we'll be okay. Uh, but all in all, like I said, I think the chopper is going to be just fine for us. I figure if we can get by, you know, if this can get us by two or three years, this chopper, uh, it's paid for itself. That's kind of how I see it. And I think we'll get at least that out of it and maybe even keep it for a backup once we upgrade to a nicer one. The, uh, the reason that we're going to, uh, to a high moisture feed is obviously we're a dairy and uh, energy is kind of a big thing and energy is just hard to get out of dry hay during the winter. Uh, we've done okay these last couple of years, but not great. Uh, and I know we can do a lot better. And I've just seen kind of some results, how, how things fluctuate just between the different qualities of dry hay that we feed and then obviously going from 
green grass to dry hay and then from dry hay back to green grass. Uh, there's just not as much protein and it's the energy is the biggest thing that we're missing. And I don't want to supplement with, uh, <clears throat> with, uh, with molasses or any fats or anything like that. I, I, we try to stick you know, as, as natural as possible. Obviously here in Iowa, you can't graze year round. Uh, I mean, there's, there's, there's ways that you can graze through the winter, but depending on snow and things like that, you can't always graze. And so the big thing for us is to, to keep the energy and the protein up, to keep condition on the cows. Condition we've done okay with, um, it's just production that's been lacking. Uh, this last winter was pretty rough. That last batch of hay that we bought was not very good hay. Uh, I was hoping that it was going to be better than it was, and it turned out to not be very good hay at all. And so uh, I, I just can't, I can't depend on that anymore. The other thing too is waste. That last batch of hay we got, we, I, I'm not exaggerating, but we probably, they probably trampled and stomped or wasted probably 60% of those last uh, round bales that we bought just because the quality was so terrible. And uh, I just can't, I, I can't afford to do that anymore. We, we need to have a better quality feed. Obviously dairy, that's very important. And so the more feed we can make here and control our product, uh, or control our feed, the, the, the more control we have over the quality of our product and the production of the cows. And so that's the other thing too, is we won't have to make, we, we, the same amount of tonnage should go further with the high moisture feed versus dry hay, uh, because we're going to get more protein. We're going to get more moisture or excuse me, more protein, more energy, but then there's not going to be as much waste because the way we can feed it too. We'll probably, I'm not sure yet. Uh, we'll, I'll figure up, there's gonna be, we, we, when we're in the lots, we'll have to feed out of bunks, obviously. We don't like to keep them in the lots. We like to keep them out on, on pasture, even during the winter. Um, it, at least, uh, you know, until the snow flies, until it gets too deep to keep them out there. But I, I like to keep them out and feed them on pasture, wherever that is, whatever part of the farm that's on, just because it's less work for us to clean the manure up and spread it. If we can keep them out there and uh, they're shredding their own manure, and uh, they're fertilizing and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the goal here. Um, just moving to a more better quality feed. Uh, that's really what we need. And like I said, we're not organically certified. Uh, we never will be. Uh, that's, uh, the government has enough control over our lives. I have no interest in being organic certified. I don't need the government's permission to tell me if I'm doing a good job with our product. That's what we let our customers do. And our customers, we have an open door policy. They can come check out our farm anytime they want and see what we're feeding and how our operations work. And so that's the relationship we have with our customers. And, but like I said, we want to keep it as natural as possible. And uh, I don't want to use any sort of, uh, any sort of uh, supplements at all. And so that's, that's our goal is to stay away from that and move over to a, a haylage or a hay silage, whatever you want to call it. And I, and I thought about doing uh, baleage where you uh, make, make wet round bales and then wrap them. We did think about that. We, we were looking at getting a wrapper, but when you figure in what it costs, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to do a wrapper, um, the, the tube line wrappers, the, the ones where you just make the real long row, those are really, really expensive. There's nobody around here really that does that. Um, there might be a couple traveling guys, but I'm not aware of them. And like I said, they're expensive. We looked at the individual wrappers. They're about 3,500 bucks. You can get a smaller one around here. Um, but then you got to have a squeezer or, you know, the squeeze uh, attachment for my skid loader or the tractor, whichever, which the tractor isn't set up with hydraulics. So it'd have to be the skid steer. Um, that's another like $4,000 on top of that. Plus then um, we would have to upgrade our baler. That 535 does not like high moisture uh, material going through it. Um, and so I, I kind of looked at, okay, I can buy this for 1800 bucks and a couple wagons. We still got a couple, get a couple wagons, but even then we're only looking at a couple thousand dollars at the most for a couple decent wagons. And then, uh, and then we are going to plan on digging a pit down here. And that's my, my plan is to dig a pit. And then, uh, so I looked at with the, the bales you got, you can, with the, with a pit, you can reuse your tarp for maybe a couple years with the bales. That is so much plastic that you're going through. And, uh, so I just thought this was a better fit for us and, uh, it was cheaper to start off with maybe down the road, we'll go to bales. I don't know, but for right now, we're going to start with this and we're going to see how it goes. And, uh, like I said, as far as feeding, <clears throat> we're looking at just getting like an older, um, an older, uh, feed wagon. And, uh, it, it, when, like I said, when they're in the, in the, uh, lots, We'll feed in bunks when they're out uh, out there, depending on conditions. I've looked at maybe I've got an old axle, thought about making a portable bunk. Otherwise, uh, I might just throw it on the ground. I don't know. We'll just kind of have to see how things go from there. But uh, that's uh, that's the direction we're going. Uh, I'm kind of excited. I've never 
I've never been involved in chopping, so I really don't know what I'm doing. You know, I've been I've been learning a lot, that's for sure, but I got a whole lot more to learn. Um, but I'm excited. It'll be fun. I've never ran one before. So anyway, that was the big news for uh, this week, uh, switching over our feed types or, or adding to it. We're still going to feed dry hay. Uh, my goal is to put up, uh, I'm hoping we can get up somewhere around 1,500 to 2,000 square bales this year. I don't really see us doing any round bales, maybe a handful, I guess. Uh, there's a, a couple, uh, there, there's one small acreage that we, we cut and bale. I may do that in round bales, I may not, depends on what comes up and what the quality of the, uh, the, the grasses and stuff are. But uh, really, as far as everything on this farm, this is all going to be square bale, excuse me, square bales and uh, haylage. And uh, we're looking at possibly a couple other small little spots too that I think are close enough that we'll probably do squares on those as well. So um, I don't know, changing, changing our, our routine a little bit around here, but that's good. Um, as I said in one of the previous videos, we're growing and we're growing very fast. And uh, within, uh, what I think within 18 months or so, our herd's gonna double. We've got a lot of heifers, or excuse me, our, our milk cows, the, the amount of cows we're milking are, is gonna double. And so we're, right now we dried up a few cows. So we're at 10 cows right now. Uh, by fall, we'll probably be milking somewhere around 14 to 16 cows. And by next summer, we'll be up to probably 20 cows or so. And then by next fall, which is about 18 months from now, we'll probably be somewhere in the range of 22 cows, 23 cows we'll be milking. And uh, that's kind of where we want to get to is around 25. I don't want to get over 30. Um, as of right now, I think that just be too much for what we're doing here. But I think around 24, 27 cows, somewhere in there, I think would be really good good for us. So that's uh, that's that's kind of the big announcement, like I said, uh, changing, changing over to uh, chopping this year and doing as many squares as we can. So that's what we got right now, guys. As always, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Uh, that's going to do it for this one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification button, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we appreciate the support like always. You guys got any questions, suggestions? Absolutely suggestions. Uh, like I said, I've never chopped before. I've never made a pile before. Uh, I do have some people in the area that are been, I've been talking to that have been kind of helping me a little bit with it. But if you got any suggestions, by all means, leave them in the comments. Um, we'll, we'll take a look at those, absolutely. So you guys take care. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you.